Hello, I'm Alice Roberts. Welcome to Lockdown Anatomy. I've designed these anatomy tutorials with medical students in mind, but you might be brushing up your anatomy later on in your career or just interested in the structure of the human body. Last time we looked at the shoulder, now we're moving on to the arm. As an anatomist, I would say that the arm extends from just the shoulder to the elbow and then you're into the forearm. So we're concentrating on this segment including of course biceps brachii and once again I'm using the fantastic 3D4 Medical Complete Anatomy app. So there's the app, you go into content, look for the models, I'm using the left upper limb model here, there are the bones that we've looked at before in these videos and now we're going to look at the muscles of the arm. So I can click on the muscular system and start adding those on and you can see them appearing. The first muscle that we'll look at in detail is this small muscle in the upper part of the arm called coracobrachialis. It attaches from the coracoid process of the scapula down to the medial surface of the humerus. And I can show you what it does. So if you raise your arm out to the side, that's called abduction, abduction. That's carried out by muscles like deltoid. Coracobrachialis is one of the muscles that pulls the arm back down to the side of your body. So coracobrachialis glows when it's active, there we go, and it pulls the arm down in adduction. The next muscle we'll look at is brachialis. This is quite a big muscle that covers the lower half of the anterior surface of the humerus and it attaches from there down onto the ulna. It's attaching onto the coronoid process of the ulna. And you can see from its position and the way it crosses the elbow joint what it's going to do. When it's activated, when it contracts, it's going to flex that elbow joint. So again, you can just click on that muscle in complete anatomy and then look at the motion that that muscle creates as it contracts. So starting with the elbow straight, extended, brachialis glows and contracts and flexes the elbow. And there it is from the other side. And you can see it's tucked behind the most superficial and much larger muscle in the arm, in the anterior compartment of the arm, and that is biceps, or as we should properly call it, biceps brachii. Biceps means it has two heads. It has a short head, which is shown on the left here, which attaches from the coracoid process, and a long head, which I'm just outlining in turquoise now, right up the top there, it attaches to the supraglenoid tubercle above the glenoid fossa of the scapula. Distally, lower down, we find that it attaches on the other side of the elbow joint. So it attaches down onto the radius, onto the radial tubercle. And I'll just indicate that attachment there with the little turquoise arrow. But it's a bit difficult to see because of all those other muscles at the top of the forearm. So we can highlight biceps and then strip everything else away. So we're just looking at that one muscle. And then we can rotate the model round and see quite clearly where that tendon attaches at the bottom there, at the distal end. It's attaching to a knobble on the neck of the radius. That's the radial tubercle. Here we go then, highlighting biceps, we can see one of the principal actions of this muscle. As it contracts, as it glows yellow, you can see that it is flexing the elbow joint. So biceps and brachialis work together as flexors of that elbow joint. But we also saw that biceps crosses the shoulder joint. So this muscle can act on that joint as well. Here we see the elbow being kept straight, kept extended, and we're seeing flexion at the shoulder. And that's biceps brachii again, creating that movement, moving the arm up and forwards in front of the body. There's another movement that it can carry out as well. And that relates to a special twisting motion in the forearm when the radius can be brought over the ulna like this in pronation. And then biceps can pull on that radial tubercle to twist the radius back again. So it moves your palm from facing downwards or backwards in this model and then brings the palm to face upwards or anteriorly as we see here. So pronation to supination and biceps tendon as a powerful supinator. Now, in fact, that muscle right next to it at the elbow is another supinator, and that one is called supinator. 
Right, we've met all the muscles in the anterior compartment of the arm. Now it's time to have a look around the back and there's just one big muscle in the back of your arm in that posterior compartment and that muscle is triceps. Triceps means three heads but when you look at it like this it looks like it's just got two. We can see a long head and that's attaching up to the infraglenoid tubercle of the scapula and we can see the lateral head as well. We need to twist it round to see hidden under both of those a deeper head and this deeper head is called the medial head of triceps. We can see that in another view with complete anatomy because we can use a tool to dissect or cut through those muscles and if I do that we can then take away a portion of the muscles so this is virtual dissection and then have a look at that cross section. Now we can see quite clearly that there are three muscle bellies. We can see the more superficial ones and we can see that deeper one underneath them. So let's label those up. There's the long head, there's the lateral head and there's the medial head of triceps. So those all have separate origins, separate attachments high up on the humerus and on the scapula. Distally, they converge on a big chunky tendon which inserts onto the olecranon of the ulna, the nobble at the back of your elbow. So if we think about what triceps does its main action, it's an extensor of the elbow. So there's the elbow inflection and then triceps is activated and it pulls that flexed elbow into extension. Right, now I'm going to add back all the muscles of the arm and we can see how that posterior compartment containing triceps relates to the anterior compartment containing biceps brachialis and coracobrachialis. I've also added in the connective tissue, the deep fascia that wraps up those muscles. Now I'm going to cut through the fascia and the muscles again because I want to show you what happens to the fascia as it wraps around those muscles and how it actually creates those two compartments of the arm. So I've used that cut tool again in Complete Anatomy to slice through the muscles. We're just below the attachment of coracobrachialis so we don't see it but we see biceps and brachialis and then behind them triceps. They're completely encased in fascia, but that connective tissue also dives in to attach to the humerus, forming the lateral and the medial intermuscular septa. I stroke M is my abbreviation for intermuscular. So there's that anterior compartment, there's the posterior compartment. And in turquoise then, I've outlined the deep fascia, the connective tissue. There's one last thing I'd like to show you. I know we're focusing on muscles, but they need nerves to innovate them. So here are those nerves. They look a bit strange here, protruding from the cut edges of the muscles. So what I'm going to do is reinstate the muscles. Let's go back to the model of the arm with the muscles in place and then start to add those nerves in. We can see where they come from, these nerves that supply the upper limb. They come from the neck. They emerge between the cervical vertebrae and they form a network, the brachial plexus, which streams underneath the clavicle towards the arm and then breaks up into individual nerves. If we take away biceps, we can see one of those individual nerves, the one that supplies the whole of the anterior compartment, and that's called the musculocutaneous nerve. Around the back, there's triceps again. If we whisk it away, we can see the nerve that supplies it. It wraps around the back of the humerus, very close to the bone. And if we get rid of all the other muscles, we'll see just how closely related to the bone that radial nerve is. It's at great risk of damage if you fracture your humerus in the middle. It lies right up against the bone in the radial or spiral groove around the back of the humerus. Finally then, we'll get rid of those nerves and look at all the muscles again, triceps at the back, and then round the front to see biceps and brachialis, and we know that coracobrachialis is underneath. Thank you for watching please like please share please comment and tell me what you liked didn't like and any areas that you'd like me to cover in these videos in the future and join me next time when i'll be moving down the upper limb to the forearm